How many heirlooms do you have laying around your house? And more importantly, what do they mean to you? We have some great heirlooms in the Grange. And no, I'm not just talking about the stuff you find laying around the Grange Hall. Stay tuned to learn more about the heirlooms we have and how relevant and useful they are today. Welcome to another Grange Resources program in which we try to provide information and inspiration. I'm Walter Bomesma, your host and communications director for the Maine State Grange. Our topic today is a brand new program introduced by National Grange called Grange Heirlooms. And with me today is Amanda Brosanna Rio, who has probably the longest title at National Grange. I mean, I've seen several versions of it. So I'm just going to say that you're the leadership and membership director. Yep, membership and leadership development director is, is the thing on the business card, but it's kind of the control. Whatever you need today. How's Whatever that? you want to call it. I know. I, I've actually gotten out of the habit of calling you the communications director, so that's progress. Uh, it's good because I totally introduced myself the other day as communications director and then had to prompt <laughs> apologize to Phil. So... <laughs> When I was in retail, you'd change a store, you know, go to a different location. Uh, you had to remember to use the right location when you answered the phone. And it's like, hi, this is Walter from, oh, wait a minute. No, not, <laughs> that's not right. Like, anyway. Do you know where you are? <laughs> <laughs> this new program, which I am somewhat familiar with because I've been working with it for a while, is a pretty ambitious program. And, it, and it's huge. I mean, it, it actually covers a five-year period. That's pretty long-range planning for the Grange. Um, can you give us a short synopsis of what Grange Heirlooms is all about? Sure. Um, we know that in our ritual work, whether that's the opening, the closing, our declaration of purposes, um, our degrees, that there are a lot of amazing lessons in there. But it's the elephant, right? And um, the only way to sometimes take down the elephant is, is to take it into small pieces, small bites. So the heirloom program really looks at those key essential lesson, lessons that Grange can teach us or remind us of um, and gets them parsed out into small pieces so that new members and members who have been with Grange for as long as they can remember alike get to revisit or be introduced to those um, essential lessons. Cool. I, it's funny because when I first started working with it, I kept calling it by the wrong name. I was heritage. calling it the Grange Heritage Program. Yeah. Um, and and I, I actually, because I love words, I actually did a little research on it and discovered eh, there's a bit of a connection there. But heirlooms typically are things that, uh, they're things, not necessarily ideas, but things that have kind of like passed down through the family over the years and, and they have some kind of meaning. Um, and I was thinking about this and I happened to walk by uh, a shelf upstairs and um, I had I saw a little ceramic pitcher, pitcher, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, that I made when I was in second grade. Um, and it's got the date on the bottom and everything. And I actually do remember making it. But I also don't remember thinking as I was making it, man, this is going to be around forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, it's kind of interesting. And, and you and I talked a little bit before we, we started the interview about what were the, what were the founders thinking you know, when, the, when they created ritual and, and degree work and so on? Were they thinking, man, this is going to be around forever? Um, and, uh, and we could certainly have an interesting discussion about that and, and why it's true. But can you kind of help us with um, where did the idea for this heirloom program come from? How did it get started? What, what kind of made yes. it? So um, <laughs> last May, um, as we've talked about before, we reorganized Jefferson Grange, which was my home Grange. Um, with my husband, myself, and my best friend from high school who had all been Grange members previously or were Grange members at the time, and a group of about 17 others that had never even heard of the Grange, probably couldn't spell it if they wanted to. Um, and so it was very quickly apparent that we were going to have to make sure that we had some way to take them from being interested in a community service organization and make them into Grange members. I mean, you don't just sign the dotted line and, and, and you're a Granger. It's something you kind of grow into and you grow into it through hearing the opening and the closing and being part of it, you know, going through the degree work as our founders would have had you do, which 
let's be honest, none of us do the way, you know, was envisioned then. And, and if we did, I, I just don't think that it would catch in the same way. Um, and understanding the Declaration of Purposes, which we don't really hand out and read as new people often, um, but also the idea that that was the only way this Grange was going to not only establish itself for a long term, um, but be seen as a Grange by other Granges. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I started looking through how can I make this connect? And I was specifically looking at the moment because we were thinking about what that opening and closing would look like when we were meeting in a pavilion. And it's very strange to tell a gatekeeper <laughs> to close the inner gate. Uh, and so there were some things that we were gonna pull out to make it shorter, to make it make more sense at that moment. Maybe we'll add them later, maybe we'll figure this out. But just for those first few meetings, as we get people used to it. And um, the work of another day demands our attention, mm -hmm. is our starting. And as I said in our last conversation, something about that struck our membership and it became our slogan it became our motto we have it on our t-shirts we have it on our website you know it's it's everywhere for us and i thought it was really interesting that these kind of keywords this little phrase got so much discussion mm -hmm. because they talked about what it meant to them and all of a sudden it was that those words will never be kind of taken for granted and they will always mean something to these people who are sitting in this Grange. How can we do that with more of these pieces? How do we look a little more like the Grangers who still tell you the first 15th, 97th time they took part in, you know, attended whatever degree? Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to start with your left foot, not your right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's where heirlooms came from. It was, it was picking through our material and finding uh, 60. So one, for each month times 12 times five. Um, I probably could have gone times six or seven. If your favorite passage isn't found in this stuff, don't worry it, we might add a year or two, but <laughs> um, but that that's where it came from was just the idea of how do we get these folks in. And I think what's interesting is we tested it, not just in that range, but in some ranges that have more established folks. Mm -hmm. And the reaction was the same, you know, the, the small snippet, how do you apply this? How, what, you know, what does this make you think of the discussion or the way to relate it to something in modern life? Um, mm -hmm. All kind of played out the same, whether it was members who had heard the degree work, you know, a hundred times before, whether it was members that were, had never heard such a thing and didn't even know what a degree was. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, I felt like it was probably uh, something that we could pursue. And it's been, it's been a really fun program to put together. And, and, and a huge, a huge job. I, you know, the, the value. Of it, I have said many times, um, including in my book, that the value of ritual is that it creates predictability. You just know certain things are a true and b going to happen. Um, and I've often told the story about a Grange who will remain unnamed, um, who one of their members said to me very, very clearly, "We don't do ritual." Um, and um, I said, I bet you're wrong. And, and she said, no, I can tell you, we don't do ritual. And we just have meetings. And I said, okay, I bet you most of your members park in the same place every time they come. <laughs> you know? And you probably all sit in pretty much the same seats every time you meet, right? So you're doing ritual. You may not be doing the ritual, but you're doing ritual. And, and, and I, I had to smile to myself when you said, uh, the work of another day begins um, because bing, you know, <laughs> that just tri you were you were ready for a Grange meeting. You were ready to, <laughs> to okay. To where's the inner gate? Why is it not going to yeah. close? Right, work yeah. of another day. And, family and one of the things that has actually scared some people about me is that I'll mess with that occasionally um, because um, in Pomona, I think I, I may. I'm not sure I'm going to get this right, so keep those cards and letters coming in. But I think it's in Pomona <laughs> where. Um, the master asks the, <laughs> hmm, does he, I, I, the master says, are the labors of the day complete? And That's the overseer. I, yeah, and the overseer is supposed to reply, they are worthy master. Um, and occasionally, <laughs> just to see if people are paying attention, frankly, 
I'll say, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody throws something at you. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, does anybody have anything they'd like to add before we, <laughs> um, right. but yeah, I think, you know, um, and, and I guess that, that kind of leads to the, the next question I would have, um, which is, um, what um, kind of, I, I've only worked with the first 12. Um, I mean, and I, I can see where the potential exists for a lot of them. Uh, and one of the problems I had, quite frankly, was every time I looked at one, it, it, I, I couldn't, couldn't just look at it and keep going. I had to stop and think about it. Um, I, it, it reminded me, typically, mo most of them reminded me of something and I and, and found myself reflecting um, and reminiscing and um, remembering about the, the degree of work the first time and so on. And I guess, and this may be a kind of a rhetorical question, but is that kind of one of the points of this? I mean, is, what are national, yours and National Grange's hopes for this program over a five-year period? Yeah, I definitely think that the idea of having our members who have seen the, this stuff, this is part of their their lexicon. That's part of the way that they speak, you know, about their experience in Grange, um, that they're going to have those moments where they're reflecting. Because the last couple of years, for many reasons, has been challenging for all of us. Um, and it's so easy to get negative. But I think being able to reflect on the first time you saw the degrees or, you know, uh, one of your mentors, um, you know, doing something that was out of character, you know, in one of these meetings, like saying, oh, I'm not sure if those labors are done yet. Um, those are great memories that can make us a little bit more, I think, positive about the entire experience of Grange yeah. and, you know, help us relive something and, and want for it in some way. Again, it, when, you combine that with hearing hopefully newer people um, talking about how they apply it to their life. I think you get the pride in organization with the pleasure of seeing it passed on and the challenge of how do we make it relevant? So the organization may not look the way it was in the fifties, but I want these people to feel the same way mm -hmm. I did. When I, I was living in that time uh, mm -hmm. when they hear it or see it. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of digesting that because I think you're right. You know, and and um, what an interesting I, lately every time I had a meeting and at the closing of the meeting, let us be quiet and peaceful citizens. That one just stops me dead in my tracks, you know. Um, and um, I, I I think I wrote recently um, that one of my favorite parts of the Grange is. Uh, I, <laughs> Things from places of faith in God, and and the joke we I hate to, I, here we go keep those cards and letters coming in because somebody's going to have a fit over this. But we uh, had a meeting this winter with very few people, and we ended up staying in the dining room. Uh, there was just enough of us to fit around a table, um, and our master did most of the standard things, and we were all sitting. And when he got to the salutation, we were all sitting. None of us could do it sitting down. <laughs> you know, we had to stand up, um, but it, and and it was kind of funny because, frankly, I was holding a two-year-old at the time, little boy, um, and uh, I was trying to teach him the, <laughs> the yep. emotions, you know, because again, it's, it's part of that that the whole heirloom heirloom. I knew I'd say that at least once. The whole heirloom concept of, you know, these are things that just haven't changed. They they don't change. You know, uh, faith in God, nurses hope, dispenses charity. Noted for fidelity. Um, I, I, in this piece I wrote recently, it was like, how'd you do that today? What did you do today? You know, and what would happen? <laughs> you know, hopes for the Grange. What would happen if every member, every morning, it's kind of like doing your devotional, reading your Bible, whatever, saying your morning prayers. Uh, what would happen if every morning, every Granger stood in front of a mirror and placed faith in God, nurtured hope, dispensed charity? and was noted for fidelity. Um, so what are some of the ways in terms of, I guess, somewhat mechanical, what are some of the ways you see Granges using these? I mean, I'll talk a little bit later about how we're doing, we're using them on the Main State Grange website, but what, what are some of the things you are seeing or have seen or hope to see? Yeah, so we've kind of run, not this exact program, but with this idea of small tidbits at, at our local range for 
now the last couple of months, um, we've also tested it out in a couple of other granges. The majority of the time, it's really about what's happening in that meeting. It's about flagging the, the heirloom of that month, um, whether it's through a poster on the wall that people notice as they're coming in and then having a discussion about it during the meeting, um, or just holding a you know, specific time aside, like in your order of business, there's a conferring degrees that none of us uses. I mean, nobody's doing that on a random Thursday night. Um, so take five minutes and, you know, have someone read that um, lesson for the month and say, what does it make you think of? When I say, you know, the work of another day demands your uh, demands our attention, what do you think of, Walter? You know, um, you're going to talk to me about your life. You're going to talk to me about running around with grandkids or, you know, getting ready to go to work or the days that you're pulling you know, double duty or two shifts or mandatory overtime or something. And people in the room who may not be living or experiencing your life are going to have a moment of clarity experiencing your life, mm -hmm. right? So um, it allows us to get closer as, as friends in this spirit of fraternity. Um, but that's, I think, the biggest mechanical use. The other options, you know, can be putting it out in your social channels and all those things hanging a poster locally um, with that quote, with the invitation for people who feel um, like they connect with it to come to your next meeting. They will hear it in the meeting. They've already seen it. They know what they're expecting. It's the ritual, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's priming their attention um, or doing an activity surrounding it. Maybe you want to have, uh, you know, some type of game, some type of coloring activity, something that makes people engage with the material um, in a way. Yeah, it, uh, I, 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 you know, certainly I love the ritual. Um, and, um, but one of the frustrations I've always had, and it's part of the reason I wrote the book, is that, that many of the lessons of the Grange, you don't get exposed to often enough. Um, and it becomes, as you've said earlier, it becomes very easy to forget them. Um, and, um, Occasionally, just getting reminded of them is a good thing, um, you know, and, um, and and truly reflecting on them because they are they are frankly, and that's one of the values of an heirloom is they're timeless. Most of them are very timeless. Um, the Grange, that's the relevancy, I think, of the Grange. We talk a lot about you know the Granges that are succeeding, defining success as being active, getting new members, and so on. Uh, the Granges that are succeeding are doing so because they're relevant. I mean, to, leadership certainly has a big part of it, but but they're relevant. They're, they're needed in their community. They're recognized in their community. And I think we could learn that same lesson in the sense that that lesson, I can't tell you how many years ago it was that I, I first did degrees or took degrees, celebrated degrees, whatever word we want to use. I, I, I do remember being taught the Grange handshake. Mm -hmm. And the guy that taught it, the, the master... Uh, that was the, the um, installation master at the time whispered to me he said this is the only time you'll ever do this <laughs> and it was funny but it was also sadly true <laughs> I mean, when's the last time and of course we're not supposed to touch each other right now because of the pandemic but but when's the last time you actually approached another gra granger and and used the quote, appropriate handshake. So, right. and I'm not campaigning. Well, am I seventh degree? Are you seventh degree? Are you yeah. fourth degree? No, and what, I've what tried to shake degree? the wrong way. Yeah. I'd just rather give you a hug. Let's be honest. Yeah, really. Yeah. We need a Grange hug. That's what we need. We, Let's put we that We definitely on. do. We all hug each other anyway, somehow. Yeah. So I think we just should make our own assembly of Demeter get on that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody write a resolution. Yeah, where is our audience for this? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to introduce a grain tug. And... I can see it coming from Main State Grange next. <laughs> it might be right. I don't know. We, we've occasionally speculated on some very strange resolutions, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so and if I can just take a second, um, what we're going to do on the main state range was actually already some of this is already in place um, is we're going to create a post every month towards the beginning of the month with one of these heirlooms. Um, for those that haven't seen this yet, um, one of the things that National has done is create an image 
um, a graphic, if you will, with the words superimposed on the graphic. Um, and we're going to use those, and, and that was part of the intent, as a monthly post um, so that at least once a month on the Maine State Grange website, <clears throat> subscribers, visitors will see that snippet, that value, uh, that heirloom. And at the bottom of that page, there will be a link, or I should say post. At the bottom of that, there will be a link to a page, which and this page is already up. It's a work in progress, um, but it's we're calling it the heirloom resource page, which is a place where it's easy, really, I think, <laughs> to find the images for the next 12 months. They're not quite all there yet, but they will be in the next day or two along with suggestions and, and instructions on how to use those images because they can be used on social media. They can be printed off, hung on. Uh, we had a Grange here um, in Maine a few years ago now that actually kind of, they must have foreseen this. They actually got some of their kids involved. Uh, they created the coloring pages with snippets of degrees and so on on them. And the kids drew pictures and colored them. Uh, that, that kind of stated what that meant to those kids. Um, now, some of it admittedly is not age five appropriate, but, but they got the general idea. Um, might be considered indoctrination, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the, the resource page is a work in progress. We're gonna try to keep it simple at the beginning because I mentioned at the beginning, this is really a huge program, uh, five years worth of images and, and snippets. Um, so we want, we want to create a nice place to start. What I'll do is I'll put those images, I'm not sorry, not the images, but I'll put the links uh, to, or the link to that page uh, for Grange Resources in the, at the end of the video. Um, and this will end up on the Main Street Grange YouTube channel. So it'll also be in the comments there. Uh, wow. Um, hey, we set a deadline for ourselves and it looks like we might achieve it if we keep moving. <laughs> right. Right. You know, this is truly something you could spend a lot of time talking about. Yeah. I, mean, I could see where if you brought up one of these snippets um, in, at, at, the, at the end of a, let's say good of the order. Anybody got anything for good of the order? Yeah, let's, let's talk about you know, this, one of these snippets. You could see how this could quickly become a very engaging conversation. Um, so uh, I don't know what what are some things that we, as we kind of wrap up here what are some suggestions questions that you've had that that, that you would like to address proactively so to speak uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good actually question um so <laughs> I definitely had some folks concerned that I was taking over the lectures program for five years and um, while I enjoyed my time as national lecturer it, that is not my time now um <laughs> Ann Bercher is going to do a great job. Um, so this is certainly not meant to be your lectures program. I mean, it, if it is occasionally just because you feel like that that makes sense for your Grange, that's great. But um, this is really meant to be in that good of the order or conferring degrees section, five minutes, you know, just touching, touching base. Really, frankly, introducing these lessons, reconnecting people to these lessons and potentially making them interested in seeing the whole degree or adopting the ritual that they thought that they weren't ever performing or whatever um, in their granges and, and reminding us kind of where we come from. The other thing is this is not meant to replace the degrees. Well, I think, and this is me personally, that there are some changes that will come to the degrees at some point, some that I hope for, um, some I don't, I don't know how they'll turn mm -hmm. out, um, just because things change. You know, the, we used to have separate degrees for men and women. We don't anymore. So things have evolved and changed and they will evolve and change again. Um, this is not supposed to be the, the end all and be all of degrees. Um, this is just supposed to be a way to have that kind of continuous reminder because we know there's sometimes you go years in between seeing mm -hmm. degree work. Some ranges don't do the opening and closing ever. Um, you know, there is a variety of things that are happening out there. And if this reconnects us in a bit of a way and encourages people, makes people want to reconnect with some of this heritage stuff, mm -hmm. um, that's going to be really, that's going to be really important um, to make sure that the Grange that was envisioned is the Grange, you know, that goes forward of the most important things. And that's these, they, you know, is the most important thing one word or, or one, you know, way you hold a stick or whatever, uh, maybe not, but these mm -hmm. values, yeah. the things that transcend Grange membership that, that 
become better person and more understanding of cycles of life and you know that type of thing that's the important stuff core values about. core values comes to mind as does in essentials uh, unity <laughs> and non-essentials liberty and what truly is essential and not suggesting certainly yeah i'm getting there not I, suggesting. I, i'm checking for it i'm checking to make oh, sure okay. you got this yeah because that's the next thing i actually want to ask you about but but seriously the the core values of the grange uh, a lot of things have changed over the years. I mean, any, you don't have to be a student of Grange history to see that, but some things happened, and and I don't, and I hope, I think, I think we both hope, won't. Um, and those are the things that we, you know, it's it's kind of like people don't think about their values until they're forced to make a tough decision. Very often, um, and that's when it becomes clear. You know, what's most important? I can't even run into this with students. I I'd like to come to class, but. I've got this other thing. Well, you got to decide which is most important, you know, right. uh, and and that's when your your whole value system starts to come in. And I think that would be a wonderful exercise for for the Grange in general and for Granges and Grangers in specific to go through of you know what really matters to us here. I mean, what does it matter? Uh, I'm hesitant to use an example because I'll get a, I'll get I'll get more cards and letters, but. <laughs> But does it matter that you mentioned carrying the sticks, the staves? Does it matter how we carry those? And whenever I talk about the staves, and, and, and you know, in the dictionary program, I, I go over the staves with the kids, and they're fascinated by it and what they represent and what they mean to us. And, and some of their, when we talk about the pruning hook, you know, get rid of stuff, get rid of stuff that, that's bad, that, that we don't want. Can, and I've said to the kids, can you give me an example of that? And the kids very often will come up with, um, bullying, that, that typically is a, a popular topic. But one of the weirdest ones, I, not weirdest, but most interesting ones I got recently was, I said, can you think of things here at school that, that you just like to get rid of, that you, that really just aren't, aren't like, it, aren't support, I didn't say supporting our core values, but, but, but aren't supporting the things that we want to do. <laughs> My kids said, yeah, math. <laughs> he wanted to get rid of math, <laughs> uh, uh, which opened another interesting conversation. But I do think, you know, that being reminded of what we think, believe is important on a regular basis is important. Um, and uh, from uh, previous conversations, I know that we both share timeless, uh, a love for the timeless lessons of the Grange, um, but I haven't tattooed any on my arm. Well, I've got two of them. So I, I'll, I'll oh, say that. Two now? Oh, I do. <laughs> you didn't know? No, I didn't um, know about that one. I was at Sturgis at Grange Revival this past summer and like seven of us went and got tattoos while we were out there. And of course mine was Grangey because I was at a Grange event sure. as faith, hope, charity, fidelity, and a little, um, and a little seedling. Aww. Uh, yeah. And then of course, you know, the my, other one. Yeah. My, that's the one I'd seen. So, yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. I don't know. Wouldn't it be interesting? Maybe we have to do a survey uh, to know if there are any other Granges. <laughs> There are. There's there at are. least three. Well, that you I mentioned the seven year old. Yeah. 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 But the, yeah. these are definitely, you know, definitely on there. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't plan to have one. So, but I'd like to think that I have them tattooed up here on my brain. There you go. Uh, so, uh, and then you may have already answered the question, but you can answer it differently when I ask it again. Are there one or two of these? snippets and, and i don't know what heirlooms is actually the right term are there one or two of these heirlooms that you find particularly meaningful um you know i i have a couple and you'll see that i probably front-loaded some of them well in faith <laughs> and hope, yeah, right well in faith and hope this world may disagree all mankind is concerned in charity mm -hmm. i third degree that i don't know that's something right because I, I've always thought about those Sundays that you see, you know, everybody mm -hmm. kind of go their separate ways. We're, we're all in theory getting to the same place, but, you know, there's disagreement of, of how we get there. And yet this is telling us it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter where you're going on Sunday. When you're here, we're all plugging forward, you know, and mm -hmm. that's important. I think that one is one of my favorite um, of the heirlooms. So you'll see that this year, that'll be up this autumn. Um, they all, by the way, if they're degree related, they fall in the season of that oh. degree. So it makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, right after that, the, the November one is um, kind of a 
amalgamation of some stuff from the Declaration of Purposes, and it basically reminds us that difference of opinion is no crime, and that it's the it's bitterness of controversy that's um, where our fault lies. And that one I think is extremely powerful. I put it in November for a reason, sure. um, because no matter what happens in any given November, as far as our elections, you know. We have to appreciate that people have differences of opinions. We have to be able to come together after an election, no matter who wins and, and work together as a community or country. So I thought that was an important one. And, you know, there, there's a, a few others that I just really love. And there's, I think everybody has their one that really, really digs down and touches them for whatever reason. Sure. Um, and I'm excited to hear when people get to theirs because yeah. There's something that is yours, you know, yeah. um, and when they get to theirs, I think, you know, it's it's going to be a really cool touchstone for them yeah. to to go into their meeting and and share their experience or their personal testimony or whatever it is. Um, and I, I want to go back for a second and just say that, you know, if you go to church, you've seen this exact same format. Um, you've seen somebody get up and read a passage of the Bible or a passage, you know, of, of a holy book, because they're not expecting that you are digesting the entire thing in a day mm. or week. Um, and these books are are quite thick, um, and our manual is no different. It's it's kind of hefty for you know an organization that's volunteer oriented. So um, this is not new, I guess. Um, nor are those passages to replace the idea of you being able to read and touch through the entire holy text. This is the same way. I mean, these passages just help you get in touch with those things and, and that have a deeper, bigger understanding. But you also know that if you're part of a specific, um, specific sect of religion, oftentimes my church here in, you know, Pennsylvania, if I'm of the same religious background as you, We'll be having the same passage read as you do in Maine, as Very someone good. does in Colorado. Um, and they'll go on maybe a two or three or four year cycle. So this is the same kind of concept as that. Mm. Um, and I think there's something really good about that because you know that other people like you, so other Grangers, um, are thinking about the same concept for mm. the, the month. They're thinking about, you know, how they can transcend what house you know you're coming from and on Sunday or um, how they can try to present uh, this idea of civility and and reduce bitterness um, and, and that type of stuff it, it just it gets us all thinking kind of in a direction and when you're doing that it's a lot easier for something to stick if you toss out a great idea and our Grange has just talked about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now I can steal from your idea. I can take it to my Grange. We can be talking about it the next time. And everything kind of helps build on each other, which I, I'd i like to see, you know, the Granges around the country as they're doing this, do it in the order that it's kind of been provided because it does, it allows us to have a giant national conversation. Yeah. Interesting. My wheels are turning because I get I in danger of getting a few ideas on this point. Um, and, 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 but you reminded me, um, we went to a Christmas um, service this year at a church that we, I'll say frequent, not <laughs> not every Sunday, certainly. Um, but um, it was a typical Christmas Eve type kind of service for a, a Protestant, if you will, based religion, um, Methodist, I think, but not that that matters. But, but they did something very interesting. Um, <laughs> people are not doing well with singing these days. I mean, you know, <laughs> so, but, and, and we've almost frankly stopped at, at range meeting. We don't have a pianist and so on. But anyway, uh, they had a violinist actually, and he did play the organ as well. But um, on a number of the traditional carols, they didn't let us sing. It was really interesting. They said, what we want you to do is read, turn to page, whatever in the hymnal, read the words as you listen to the music. <laughs> Very uh, neat. Isn't it? I mean, that's not a major cage rattle because that kind of gets you in trouble, typical in, in ritualistic organizations if you shake the cage too much. Um, but I have shared that with other folks from other churches um, and they've gone, 
wow, you know, because what it did was, I mean, if you obviously could opt out and think about vacationing in Maui or something, but, but what it did for most of us was force us to focus on the words and the meaning of the words. I was just sitting here, I'm thinking of one of my favorite carols, and I started, like, in my head, I started thinking of the words, and then I could do nothing but sing them in order to remember them all, because <laughs> it's going to come like <laughs> Christmas, and then I'm sitting here, and I notice I'm doing one of these, and your viewers are like, what in the world is <laughs> What's going on with Amanda? She's gone. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, I just... In her own uh, little world there for... But I definitely, definitely was thinking of the words for a moment, and, like, I don't know. I love that song. I sing that song every time we go caroling, which I am the idiot who's been putting caroling together since I was 10 with my friend group. And so we've been doing that a long time um, whenever I've lived home. And uh, yeah, I don't know that I would think about it normally. I just sing it because I like it. Yeah, I know. It's, you know. I memorized a lot of poetry when I was a kid. Um, and some of it's in long-term memory. Uh, but I have a lot of trouble getting it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, un unless there's some kind of a uh, uh, trigger uh, uh, and and truly I'll have to, I can't just give you a well there are a couple of exceptions but by and large I couldn't just give you a line from the poem I have to think about what came before it and what comes after it so uh, I'm going to duck the question partly because we're running out of time by saying that if somebody asks me and one of the kids at school asks me what my favorite book is I usually tell them the one I'm reading which kind of gets them thinking um it may not end up being one of my favorite books, but um, but that might be my answer on this one, uh, because I, I think just even working with them over the last week or so, you know, putting the page together and so on, it's like each one of them did something different to me, I guess I would say. Um, but for me, the big thing I like, my one of my favorite things about the Grange is the timelessness, timelessness and the connection the connection to nature, agriculture, and the land. There's a, a line in the, the, was a popular movie, nature will find a way. Um, and, you know, I think uh, when I think of the Grange, I think that that's something that we, I don't, there's probably a good quote for that somewhere in one of these <laughs> degrees or whatever, but but truly, I mean, you know, we, we fight nature when instead nature finds a way. I, I have a photo somewhere that I took down in Pennsylvania, uh, total concrete. I mean, uh, I think it was the side of a road with a um, sidewalk and so on. Everything is concrete. One little violet coming out of one of the cracks. Um, and I wish I got to find that picture because I think, you know, yeah, nature finds a way. Uh, and we can learn so much from it. And I really like, I, I said that in the Zoom meeting you had the other night, I said that the, I, the biggest problem I see with this program is that we're going to under, underestimate it. We're gonna we're just not gonna fully appreciate the value of it. Because as we start showing our heirlooms, <laughs> it almost sounds dirty. <laughs> almost does, but you know what? That's all right, that's all right. Not fruit not bloom. <laughs> heirloom. <laughs> as, we, as we start getting more familiar, I think, to some extent, with our own heirlooms, what we've got, and start sharing it more openly with communities. I mean, I made the comment that, you know, wouldn't it be great if you had one of those signs, uh, could be digital, could be one of the kind you stick the letters on, and every month out in front of your Grange Hall, you had a different one of these, uh, ideally following the, the kind of recommended schedule. Um, if, wow, you know, because all of a sudden the community starts to understand what you stand for. Um, I love when I get a question uh, in the community, um, I had one the other day. I stopped at the hardware store on the way to the Grange Hall, actually, and, and <laughs> the clerk said to me, can I ask you a question? And I'm like, go for it. <laughs> and he said, are you the guy that's in charge of that that like book club thing that they do at school? And it's like, oh, yeah, you're talking about the bookworm program, um, which I won't take the time to go into great detail on here. But but I think, you know, because he at once he, he established that I was the guy that kind of headed it up he was like, what a great program it is and i'm thinking to myself little do you know little do you know that you're on my volunteer list when we start it up again because right now we're not doing it because of the pandemic but i, right. I really believe that there's 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 a pent-up energy out there that we could tap into yeah um, but people don't necessarily know what we stand for and um so it, i think it has value not only to us as members but to the, the to the world, if you will, I mean, <laughs> there are eight billion people out there that could be Grangers. Uh, if they if they only knew, you know, would they? Um, 
So I, I'm guessing because your membership. What was it? Membership leadership? Leadership membership director. Membership leadership development. <laughs> leadership. I can always leave I'll, I'll remember it one day too. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's got to be at least somewhere in there. That's got to be uh, a, an objective of this program, I would think. I mean, yeah, it's it's a big focus that, you know, oftentimes I think people just assume we haven't had a new member in a while, so we'll never get one or we don't know how to go about this or we're, we're not sure what to do or we're not attractive to new members or whatever. I, I don't know. The the hesitancy, I guess, upsets me a little bit. Um, but the, we've we've got to have some things that that connect with people um, on a real deep personal level for them to come in and and really you know look and see if this fits them. We have to find the people who fit, um, and then we have to make sure that we're advertising what we are like. And by that I mean. How often have you heard someone respond with, oh, we're a, we're a farm organization, we're, we're an ag organization, or something like that. Um, and then you know that that new member is going to walk in and they're just going to be talking about collecting socks and reading dictionaries, mm -hmm. which, Walter, I love your Grange. Oh, you yeah. collect socks and read dictionaries all day long. But if you had a young farmer walk in there with their family, because they expected to have a more farm viewer experience or, you know, have a bunch of folks talking about, you know, specific issues in farming, mm -hmm. they might be like, did well, I come to the right place? Yeah. Is this the right right night for this meeting? Is this yeah. a different group? And so, um, you know, when we're advertising what we are, they need to see that happening. And so mm -hmm. for me, I think, especially you're living your values out loud, as you mentioned, you know, you, you are thinking about this stuff after you leave and hopefully mm -hmm. living that, that you are promoting it by, you know, just print out two or three of the posters that we've created. Um, you'll see the ones that just have the words in the image and you'll see ones that have the words, the image, and then say, come to our next meeting. You know, if this yeah. sounds like you, everyone's welcome, you know, come date, location, time, place, whatever. Yeah. Um, and when they hear it a second time, they hear what captured them the first time being spoken about, when you have people saying, this is how this connects to me, um, it, it becomes a lot more palatable that maybe we're not talking about what I thought all the time, because we are so broad, um, but we are talking about that thing that I care about now. Mm -hmm. And that's that first impression thing, man. That first impression makes a big difference really, because it, it's really there's, there's real irony behind this and I, I really wish we had more time because we just took in two new members um and <laughs> without going into all the whole story um they're farmers they're young well, comparatively compared to us <laughs> they're relatively young farmers um and um it was really kind of interesting uh, they've only been with us. Well, they've only been member less than a month, members less than a month, but a um, couple meetings, I guess. Um, one of the things I talked to them about was, you know, what what are you looking for? I mean, you know, what do you what do you want? And and the things they talked about. I mean, they don't need somebody to teach them how to feed their sheep, right? You know, but they are concerned about their kids. They have three young kids, um, and they would like their kids because they're homeschooled. <clears throat> they would like their kids to experience for lack of a better word, socialization, uh, they would like their kid. And this was really interesting because this is actually what, I, as I recall, this is actually what they led, the mom led with, was we'd like our kids to develop an understanding of the importance of ritual. Well, man, did you come to the right place? <laughs> right? Yeah, you covered in spades. <laughs> we got that one covered. Um, and and But what's been kind of funny is how quickly they got engaged and and like for our most of us frankly aren't big lamb eaters you know right um well that's what they raise on their farm and their farm is really about stewardship um so so the next potluck what did they bring they brought I, lamb of course yeah and we went crazy because everybody got to experience something new um and and you know i just feel like engagement energy energy creates energy um, Absolutely. And, and the values, I, I guess, you know, and I understand what you're saying, because I think you're right. I mean, I, there are some granges, uh, I can think of a grange right off the top of my head, that is really focused on, um, um, let's say, the arts. Um, that would not be a grange I would necessarily feel like I really wanted to be part of. 
um, not nothing against them, but I don't know if we th are going to think alike. But then again, you know, there's a lot of value in being with people that you don't think the same as, because that becomes challenging. Anyway, so uh, the shared value thing to me is is such an important part of it. Um, and I, I would also say, again, keep those cards and letters coming in, but the Grange has historically not done a great job of being transparent about their values. Um, well, for, you know, more than the first three quarters of our existence, people didn't walk into meetings unless they had a password. Exactly. You know, so they certainly weren't coming and seeing our opening and closing unless they had some kind of practice special sensation yeah. and it wasn't until the last you know couple dozen two dozen three dozen years yeah. probably two dozen years that our degrees were considered public yeah. um and the the great thing for me of course over the past 10 years has been that i am able to use that as fodder on like our social media sure. this is not like we take out billboards and things like that and post it around <laughs> yeah. you don't really help but um you know, we've been able to use that to reinforce some of this, which is also kind of a precursor to how this came about. But before that, you didn't go into degree work unless you were an accepted candidate, you know, mm -hmm. an applicant who had been verified by a committee that investigated whether or not you would fit in the Grange. And while that's actually kind of something that we've gotten away from that, that stinks because it's really nice to know that the, the people who are coming in want to be there and want to mm -hmm. want to work and want to make the place the community better and things like that you know at the same time i mean i hear like verification committee or you know investigation committee and i'm like okay that sounds really really crazy what are you investigating me for? I'm coming to volunteer and give my money <laughs> um, pass some test here <laughs> <laughs> so so I mean, it. I get why we we had things the way we do. I get why we don't. Um, but the the happy middle ground that's left us with these things that we can now have open to the public and really showing who we are, I think, is really nice. It's, it's about understanding. I mean, I, I I always remember, and I'm pretty careful when I talk to the kid. We have several classes. Again, we got to set the pandemic aside. But historically, we have a couple of schools that make a field trip to the Grange Hall. Uh, to get their dictionaries and they learn about the Grange in the process. And I'll never forget. I slipped up one day, you know, we have a grain, we have this Grange language um, that we use. Um, and I, I don't remember now what the context was. Kid asked me a question and in answering the kid's question, I, I mentioned our deputy. <laughs> and now you can immediately see where this is going, right? He thought you have a, a sheriff, basically. Well, he said, you know, what kind of badge does he have? What kind of gun does he carry? Um, and, and I frankly, I'm, he I'm might really be a lot speechless. Cooler, I, don't know. I had to really do some dancing on this one. Um, and I, I, I think I kind of came out of it okay. But I thought afterwards, I was saying to myself, you know, how, 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 how revealing that is. That we, we don't understand when we we always fear that which we don't understand you know kids are less likely than adults frankly but but um so when we withhold intentionally or not when we withhold information what we're really doing is becoming our own worst enemy because we're not giving people the opportunity to understand what we're about so i i think that's like a perfect segue to what i was going to answer if you ask me <laughs> but, um, go ahead <laughs> oh, we have an internet. Yeah. try again I, uh, amanda we had an internet yeah. issue there for a second oh sorry i said that that's kind of a perfect segue into what i was going to answer if you asked me what else i had to say okay. um, which i was going to <laughs> <laughs> well there we go so i'm, I'm checking it off the list um there is a quote it's the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Yes. yes. It's African proverb. I don't know why it's stuck with me for a long time since I've heard mm -hmm. it, but it came, it, it came furiously back to me when I watched a couple of years ago, some Granger of some length with, you know, a family history in Grange and what have you telling someone that they weren't a real Granger 
because they hadn't gone through the degrees. Now, mind you, it was in a state that hadn't held the degrees in many years. So if this person was really that upset about it, they should probably have hold, held the degrees, but whatever. Um, and I thought to myself, so you can't be a real, real member. You're not embraced by this village, right? That you are, you have paid, mm -hmm. put your time in, you're trying to conform to and learn about, unless you've done the things that that village is not willing to provide you. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's pretty rational. And, and it, it just, it kind of stuck because I thought I am definitely um, now finally embracing all of the tradition and ritual in in probably the furthest way I ever will. Sure. Um, although, who knows? But you had asked me 10 years ago when I had first joined the Grange, you know, I'd only been in for a year or two before ever having the degrees, having only just read it on paper and not really thought much about it since, you know, mm -hmm. after that, I probably would have told you to take all the manuals, stick it <laughs> in the fire plant, yeah. Yeah. and we toast marshmallows. I, I mean, it was very literally a while until I could appreciate what I was hearing. Um, partially because, you know, you're not sitting there talking with someone about the whole degree stuff if you're not watching it. it it's a blur. Um, I mean, it truly runs by you as a blur. Yeah, even when we watch it, it, I mean, I ha we have an eight second attention span anymore. And I gotta <laughs> tell you, I was in and out of that thing a lot. Um, now that I know what I'm listening for, now that I've read this multiple times, right. and especially the, the pieces that my local Grange has reflected on over mm -hmm. these past couple of months, I'm ready to hear them again, you know, and I will, I will, they will hit my ears. I will put my face up. I will think about what I heard my friends in my Grange say, and it will track a whole different. Now I will, of course, think about that and lose the whole next three minutes, but, but <laughs> right. I, I will be it ready. Resonates. It. It, right. It resonates. I will be ready for it. It will resonate differently. And I am less likely to burn down the village yeah. because if you had a lot of me's running around without an appreciation for this, having, you know, been slowly weaned in and mm -hmm. then, you know, accepted all of the stuff and wanted to see it, it's very possible that if we do strike some chord and we do get in, you know, a bunch of new folks who are ready to take up the next generation they're not going to appreciate some of the stuff and they will burn it to the ground. And I don't, I don't not understand where that comes from. I, I guess. totally agree. I mean, I, and it's funny because you've taken me back to the first time. I mean, because I got put, we got pushed very hard to get, to get the degrees, which first of all, that's kind of sucky language. I mean, is it something that is done to you? You know? Um, and, and, and truly the, 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 the night we were supposed to get the degrees or take the degrees, um, we got sent to the wrong Grange. Um, and um, there's nobody there. <laughs> Part of we, it. it. Am I oh, on candid camera? <laughs> oh, my God. It was so funny because we really, we didn't know what to do, first of all. Um, and, and we actually speculated that that was part of the, the ritual, you know, Absolutely. Uh, that it was part of, because, you know, and, and we don't use this phrase very often anymore, but they talk about riding the goat. <laughs> and, Please don't do that to people. I know, and I, but I would say to you. out there of the world, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't talk about the goat. But I would say to you, I mean, it's fun, because now we know what that's it's all fun. about. But, sure. but if you don't know, and I would tell you in all honesty, that the would that the handshake was that something very memorable. The other memorable thing was the the ear the uh, seeds the corn. Uh, but but what, what do I remember most about that Grange when we finally got to the right hall? It, actually, we didn't. We had to wait a whole month. <laughs> um, we went home. Well, actually, we went out to dinner, so it wasn't a total loss. But anyway, um, <laughs> I finally went to the my memory, emotional memory of that night was feeling embarrassed and frightened <laughs> and really puzzled. I did not understand 90% of what happened. Um, and I, <laughs> I think of, and I, I really don't 
want to share the whole story, but anybody who's been through the degrees knows it's a pretty extensive process, particularly if you do all four at once. I mean, it takes what reasonably hours. hours. Yeah, I mean, three, four hours. Set aside a day, right? Yeah. And I remember, uh, actually, this was passed on to me. It wasn't firsthand. Somebody, it was actually a master of Grange, took some of his people to a degree day, um, which turned out to be horrible. I mean, it just, you know, there were so many things wrong with this degree day. Part of it being everybody was like, you know, they do it from memory. They don't put any meaning in it. Um, it, it I could go on and on. But anyway, he said, we're driving back from the degree day. And he said, one of the people in the car said, well, now we know what it takes to become a Granger. Answer this question. What does it take to get out of this? Yeah. <laughs> and the guy wasn't actually kidding. I mean, he he didn't get that 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 connection that it didn't resonate to, to go back to that word um and how sad that is you know I, i've i've said <laughs> not that i'm a necessarily a big fan of the catholic church but we had to look at the old catholic church because they know how to do it you had catechism you had to understand at least at some level you had to understand what you were doing when you took your first communion right. um gee whiz you know should we have catechism of course the reality is at least here in maine uh, i can't tell you the last time there was a degree day here in maine uh, we're, we're falling back on, with some justification, the um, obligation ceremony. Um, but uh, it, I think all of this kind of fits together. And as usual, you and I have managed to go way past our planned time. Um, I hope. <laughs> I, I can tell how many people watch it, but I can't tell if they watch the whole thing. <laughs> like, oh, these two again. Yeah, those two again, you know. Fast forward to the end. Um <laughs> Although the end is not always, well, I think we make some good conclusions out of things. Um, I was going to say, I think we, I think we might be able to cut it here, considering we did a really good job. Of <laughs> Hopefully, we'll hear, we'll, we we'll hear at least one or two compliments somewhere along the way, and 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 that's the other thing. I mean, I, and I have to just kind of get on this hobby horse quickly, is um, with the Main State Grange website uh, and the YouTube channel and things like this. Let us know, tell us, and I, and I know I didn't give you an opportunity to make that point, but I know you would really love to hear from Granges that are trying this, that are having trouble, but not just the ones that are having trouble, but the ones that say like, oh, wow, you know, we did this and wow, was it really cool. Uh, you've already yeah, had it. something new about one of my fellow Grange members. I, you know, we came up with a new service project because we talked about this value. Yeah. We finally understood why we're doing this old service project. Because <laughs> we have this value. I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I love the, the I, I don't I can't get started on the Amish I'd love to because that's that's another if you will marginalized population that most of us don't understand we think it's about not using electricity and and driving horses and buggies right. um, and and I'm on some Facebook social media groups where people will come on oh, I'd really like to try being an Amish person but I don't know if I could live without electricity and I've actually said to them I'll tell you what's going to be harder than living without electricity What's going to be harder than living without electricity is practicing their belief system, whereby you forgive somebody the minute they've wronged you, typically, yeah. doesn't mean there's not consequences, whereby you place the value of community above the value of the individual. See, it's, it's the parts of that, that margin, and, and to some extent, the Grange is a marginalized population, more so and more so because we have shrunk over the years. I mean, hundred and whatever years ago, everybody <laughs> knew pretty, pretty much. knew a Granger. At yeah. least if they weren't a Granger, they knew a Granger, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I love it. I just got invited to do a program at a historical society um, based on the book I've written, obviously. But they, they've also said, we would like to better understand the Granges contributions to the communities over the years. You know, what what did those Granges of 100 and plus years ago, uh, what what effect did that have on the communities? But but what I really liked was the follow-up question because the second part they want is how is the Grange doing that today? Right. And I think we have those opportunities and, and you and I've kind of talked about the fact that the yeah. hard part is meeting them all, getting to them all and doing them all. But but yeah, you know, let's let's be let's be proud of who we are. <laughs> my my sister-in-law, when she was, she had little kids, when she'd send them off to school, she'd always her parting words were not "I love you." It was "Do well, make me proud." 
<laughs> so I think with this program, we have a real big opportunity to do well and make not only ourselves proud of ourselves, but to make, and I'll say the world, but to make the world proud, because there could be certainly an international range. Uh, I think there were a few attempts. There have been. Canada, been, yeah. Mom, yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, hey, this will be a very appropriate based on something you said earlier. Um, we really are out of time. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, and, and I think you and I have talked a little bit about getting you back on maybe, I don't know, months, six weeks, something like that, uh, to do some follow-up talks about some of the things that you've learned, some of the things you've seen. Uh, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about what, what's happening here on the Maine State Grange website in the Maine. Um, so even though this isn't really a meeting, uh, and one of the things I've learned is if you don't think about it, you can do things from memory. But if you start to think about it, and you kind of said this earlier with the carol, right? So I always have <laughs> anything I want to get right verbatim available to me, and I'm going to look at it because if yeah. I don't, I'll get distracted. Um, I think it really is a very appropriate way to, to end, as there is no more work for us today. And we again, to separate and go our separate ways, let us not forget the principles of our order. Oh, God, sounds promising, doesn't it? I really, this is probably, if I, if I were pressed, this is probably this my is favorite. For you. There you go. Yeah. Let us add dignity to labor. Wow. That sounds pretty cool. And in our dealings with our fellow men, be honest, be just, and fear not. <laughs> I had to do this recently. And when I got to the next one, I actually had to stop. Let us be quiet, peaceful citizens. Can you think of anything that is more appropriate in the world today? Let us be quiet, peaceful citizens, feeding the hungry, helping the fatherless and the widows. A little bit sexist, we might want to add the and widowers. <laughs> Single parents. What, what's, what's the new phrase? Um, parental units? No, that's right. what it, there's a new vocabulary around this that I don't know. I'm thinking oh, just the people parents. who have suffered loss, maybe. Maybe we could change that one. No. I don't know. If you weren't married, there you <laughs> But see, see, here we go, right? We're doing it's... exactly what we've been talking. I mean, we're having fun with it, obviously, but that's okay, too, is let's think about what we're really saying here, that we're hearing, that we're saying. So anyway, I'm trying to get this done. <laughs> Helping the fatherless yeah. and the motherless <laughs> and the widows and the widowers. And keeping ourselves unspotted from the world. The patron places faith in God, nurtures hope, and dispenses charity. Amanda, thank you, as always, for being with us, uh, for being enthusiastic, <laughs> for doing what you're doing. Um, and we're going to have you back again real soon. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing to promote this program. And I love... I love how the Maine State Grange has um, the resources available. So even if you're not from Maine State, uh, <laughs> certainly yeah. you know, check out how they're, they're doing it. You, you'll need a password to get to that resources. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, obviously. You might know a guy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you might know somebody, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Amanda. And uh, we'll be back with you very soon. We'll see uh, for those who are listening watching uh, this will be well you obviously you will know that because you're watching it. Ugh. i was going to say this will be available on the main state grange youtube channel uh, and will be available on the resources for grange pain page ugh, on the main state grange website uh, and if you have any questions or any comments if there's anything you'd like to see us doing or hear let us know we're grangers we're here to help